When you start the whole process for, for the third album, was, was there a song where you kind of felt that you've caught this, what you said earlier, that this um, songwriting that you were looking for? What was the verb that you used? When I felt like I did what? When you felt you caught or kind of... Um, um, I felt, I mean, Grey Tickles was one, okay. you know, Grey Tickles was a, an important song for the record. But I mean, Down Here was, a, uh, was one, and um, You and Him, I don't know, there were, there were several different moments. Well, let's, let's take uh, Great Tickles. Was it an early song? No, it came later. Um, it was sort of in the middle of the songwriting process. What I had the idea for it, you know, the, the title for it, but I didn't have the music or the lyrics for the rest of it. When did the title come up for you? Mm, about a year and a half ago. Okay. Um, I'd, always been, I'd always found Black Pressure from Turkish mm -hmm. interesting because I've always thought, I've always learned, just for some reason, I've always learned the word nightmare first in okay. foreign languages. And so when I was learning a bit of Turkish, um, uh, I learned um, the word for nightmare. And they told me that it translated, you know, roughly to black pressure, okay. which I thought was really interesting. Karabasan. Mm -hmm. And um, and then, uh, you know, years later, then I got this other little tidbit uh, from, I was having breakfast with an Icelandic friend, and I was asking him how, how, peop how Icelanders talk about midlife crisis, how they mm -hmm. say that. And he said, oh, we don't say that, we say... Um, which basically translates to Grey Tickles. And um, I thought that was so interesting. And so those just, like a magnet, those two just, you know, the black pressure came from somewhere else in my head and the Grey Tickles and they just sort of attracted each other like a magnet. I thought they went really well together. And, well, this, this idea then of... Um of, of midlife crisis, well, did it just happen to be come in your mind, or was it something you were uh, thinking about a lot? Well, I've always been thinking about you know midlife crisis. I feel like I've you know been in one since I um, was born. Okay. But I, you know, it was I wanted to explore you know what that is, what that feeling is, you mm -hmm. know, and I think it's about getting perspective. You know, so the song "Gray Tickles Black Pressure" is about getting perspective in your own life. You know. And then through the song, and have, have you found a bit more perspective now? Like, once again, I think it's a daily, something you have okay. to do on a daily basis. Because you get caught up in your own shit every day. Mm. You get, there's a million things to distract you every day, and you have to remind yourself every day. You know, there are children out there battling cancer. There's people who, you know, who um, gun violence is a daily reality for them. Mm -hmm. And they have nothing, and they don't have homes, and they're... You know, so you have to have that. They have to have that balance between taking care of your business, you know, and making sure that you do because you're important too. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not like you're not important because other people have it worse. You know, this is your this is the sure. life that you're leading, and you have to take care of your thing. You know, mm -hmm. but I think it's good to remember, you know, that there that that things could have been a lot different for you. You know, and that there are a lot of people in the world who have. Um, who have it very, very differently. So, I mean, this isn't anything that people haven't been trying to sure. teach their children for, for years, but it's hard these days, especially, I think it's hard for people in this day and age to get perspective mm. with all the, um, the movie culture and the game culture and the internet culture and, you know, you have everything in your face all mm. the time. So, um, it's, it's sort of a conundrum because it's sort of a, a, a paradox because you have all the tools to find out and get perspective because you can see what's happening in the world everywhere, mm -hmm. but we use it to distract ourselves even more. So it's, it's, it's interesting. And I believe this, I forgot uh, which song it was, but you, you wrote, all I've got is first world uh, problems. Uh, and then I'm paraphrasing, but then let me go out and get some, some third world ones. Yeah. So this, this ties in with that, where, where yeah, you're yeah. kind of finding a balance between the yeah, two. Yeah, you have to, I mean, you can't go out and get third world problems. You have sure. to deal with your first world problems, you know, because that's what you have. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you know, you, it's, people are always saying, oh, shut up with your first world problems. You know, but it's like, they only have first world problems too, you know. And I mean, they, you know, what are you supposed to do? You're supposed to 
and go out and get third world problems. I think people are saying, you know, first world problems are, are not problems. They're just, you know, but, you know, in, in some ways you have to deal with, with what you have. You know, you, mm -hmm. you can't, um, but I, I do think that, that they're right in the sense that, you know, they're, they're talking about having perspective, you know, and it's mm -hmm. like, if you think about what's going on in the world and maybe not having an internet connection right now, it's not such a big deal, <laughs> you know? Sure. And it's not ever a big deal, you know? And, uh, well, getting back to the, to, to the album and the recording process, you recorded in Dallas. Well, uh, and, and do you still live in Iceland? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. so, so why Dallas? Well, that's where the, the producer okay. had his studio. And, you know, it was just, uh, it was nice to get out of the dark winter, you know, mm -hmm. in Iceland and go into the sunny, into the sunniness of Texas, too. Did it influence the music? Mm, I don't know. I don't really know. I mean, I'd already written the songs. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, what really, what directly influenced the, the music was... Um, was, you know, the producer, because okay. that's where he's from, and, and that's, um, he has, but I think it's more, you know, he has a specific sound, okay. or he has specific, you know, techniques for sound, and that he uses, and um, so I don't know about, you know, I, I don't really know how to answer that question, because I'm sure it did influence the music, but I don't know how, you know. Okay. Yeah. And then, you know, talking about the sound, were, were you already looking for a certain sound? Did, did you have a, an idea before you, or when you were writing, while you mm. were writing the song of how, how they should have sound? Or how they should sound? Mm, not, um, yeah, I had, I wanted there to be a lot of synths, but I had found a lot of the sounds that I wanted before going into the studio, you know, so I had a lot of the sounds, but I wanted, um, you know, that's the reason I worked with a producer was so that he would sort of put you know, other sonic clothing onto the songs. And mm. we just worked together, you know, throughout the process to, um, but yeah, I suppose I had an idea. I mean, I wanted it to be very electronic. I wanted it to be very modern sounding, but I wanted there to be lots of, you know, references to the past as well, mm -hmm. things that are important to me from the past. Um, but I wanted it to still sound like a modern record. And um, I think that, you know, with John's help, you know, we achieved that. And then you say you wanted a more uh, more synth sounds, more modern sounds. Um, do you start then with the instrumentation to to, to get this, or, or do you do you, does it arrive in your mind first? You know, if that makes sense. Yeah. Well, I think I think I have it in my head first, okay. and then I go looking for the sounds. Okay. You know, I have the sounds in my head, and then you just start experimenting around and. A lot of times you find better sounds, mm. or sometimes you find exactly what you were looking for, you know. But you just try and get as close to what you're hearing in your head, and then you know as you're doing it, it just takes you on different paths, and mm. you just go with it as it as it happens. Which song on the record do you feel you've gotten closest to to what you had in mind for the song? Mm, maybe Grey Tickles or Snug okay. Slacks. Okay. Well, if we, if we take uh, uh, Snug Slacks, which is quite a different song from yeah. uh, Great Tickles. Yeah. Uh, how, how did it start? And then, well, let, yeah, let, let's well, start Well, it started with, with a bass line. Um, it just started with a bass line and a chorus. Mm -hmm. You know, I had, the, I had the lyrics for the chorus already written in my head. And I'd written them down as well. And um, then I just started out with this bass line from the Juno 106, which is my one of my favorite synths. I think it's one of the, the greatest synths ever made. And it has the most incredible, fat, warm sounds. Um, so it started out with this bass line, and then I started putting um, electronic drums with it. Mm. And then I just did the vocals on it. Uh, I was lying in bed. <laughs> okay. I, I just did the vocals one morning when I woke up. And... Um, yeah, and so it was very, very basic, the demo. Okay. And then John added some really nice elements to it, like some of the, per the percussion and sort of the flanging and all sorts of um, interesting effects, you know, to... Were the words already written? 
before the kind of the instrumentation came, came in? No, okay. so, just, so, the, just the chorus, and then I got the bass line, and then the verses came. In that sense then, because um, you have that bass line, does the music in a way drive what you write about? Um, I think mostly it's I think mostly it's the lyrical content that's driving it. Okay. But sometimes I feel like they're just separate entities, and then you have to figure out which ones go with which. Because mm. the music is always a driving thing as well. Down here, for example, was all music okay. and and no lyrics. Um, so that was uh, something that I didn't know what I was going to do with because I only had the music first, mm. and then it became down here. But I feel like. Usually it be, it starts with the lyrics and then the music, and then I do the music separately and then start to put them together and figure out which lyrics go with which music. So in that sense, do you write um, a lot and just have like a, a sketchbook or, or whatever with all these ideas and and, and you kind of? Yeah, I'm always just putting down little ideas in my computer and and on my notepad and and then I just start piecing it together like a puzzle. Hmm. And then I assume these are, can it be anything that inspires you to, in terms of the lyrical content or is it? Yeah, it could be anything. I mean, and it is often anything. I mean, I, I'm taking, I usually take a lot of pictures as well. Okay. And those, you know, that creates, you, you, you know, I always try and capture an atmosphere in the, mm. in the picture. And then I look at those pictures later and they remind me of things and, it could come from a color or an atmosphere from a picture or a, a, an imagined scenario in that. And a lot of times I'm writing, though, my reactions to things, okay. you know. It's usually everything is filtered through my brain, you know. Mm. I guess that's quite logical, but... Um, so so do, do if, if you listen back to the album or even play them live now, do they take you back to that kind of moment uh, that, where, where, the, where it was written? Yeah, sometimes, mm -hmm. definitely. Finally then, uh, the intro, it, it starts with, uh, I think it's a passage from the Bible, Corinthians 13.5, mm -hmm. if I remember yeah, yeah. correctly. Yeah, that's right. Why, did, why this intro? Well, I, I, I heard that verse a lot when I was growing up, because I, you know, I, I was in very religious surroundings when I was growing up. And I thought it would be an interesting contrast you know, to... Mm. Um, how love has looked in my life and um, what I was taught mm. love should be. Mm -hmm. you know, so I thought that was a very interesting contrast. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much for your my time. My pleasure. Thank you. <laughs>